right? If I was pulling an 18 wheeler with a full load of, you know, cars on the back of it, and I wasn't sure if I could get the, the, the thing to, to stop by that stop lot, well, I'm going to let off sooner and go slower to it, right? You just don't ever know, right? But until you start experimenting with how fast your motorcycle will stop, you're never going to know, right? Okay? Uh, this is probably a really good thing to practice if you ever go around the street, too. And what I like to call this drill is threshold braking drill, right? You're going around and you get your tires warm, first of all, before you try to go to max brake pressure, always. And um, uh, <clears throat> you go down, uh, make sure there's no cars around you or nothing like that, right? And you go from, you know, 70 miles an hour and just try to see how fast you can get that motorcycle to safely stop, right? And, uh, uh, and one thing a lot of people do is they, use, they depend on too much engine braking, right? All right, so they go down there, boom, and the bike will slow them down. They just downshift a couple times. They do all the stop and form. You're never really getting, you know, getting that the the, the around amount of confidence of how fast you'll stop, just depending on engine braking. Because you know, what, what if you went to fifth gear that time on the straightaway? You've been going to fourth. Well, you're not going to have near as much engine braking as you go down through the gears, right? So always got to be in control of your levers, right? I actually, I actually use use my clutch as an engine brake. Right? I mean, as a, as, a, as, a, as a third brake, you know? Well, I use every, every single tool on the motorcycle to help me slow down, you know? That's why I can take my uh, 1,000 down to the four marker at 161 miles an hour. Because I use everything available to stop it, right? Sitting up, using the wind, engine brake, boom, boom, like that. I, for instance, I'll get my shifted done really quick. I'm coming from fourth, fourth down to second gear. I'll pop them down in a second real quick, but I won't dump the clutch. Why? Because I'm going to go like that, right? So I get it just where I can feel it really torquing the motor down, and I stay right there, all the way in the corner, right? So I'm using that maximum engine braking, and I got it right on my finger the whole way in, and I slip it out, rise up with the knee on the ground, right? And you'll watch, if you see guys in like MotoGP riders and stuff, they're doing the same thing, you know? They had the best slipper clutch in the world. Why would they need to slip the clutch? Exactly why I just told you. They're controlling their engine speed with that. They know if they just dump it out, and they may over slow, right? Because the thing has too much engine braking, right? Even though it's got a slipper clutch, doesn't mean it doesn't have engine braking, okay? Some people set it up to where it's full slip, right? Like 250 Grand Prix riders do. Uh, they come on the MotoGP, they want full slip, so they don't have any engine braking. Well, to me, that kind of takes away uh, another tool that you can be using. Right? And I've rode some R6s, I've rode Rovers and teams or whatever, and they, I'd get there and they'd have the thing with a slipper clutch in it, that full slip. I'm like, but you just gave away one of the biggest tools, right? So, if you got full slip, you don't even have to pull the, you know, use the clutch. Just bum, 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 and you got no engine braking anyways. Well, that's, that's not exactly what we're looking for. Right? We want, we want to blend it all in together. We want to use every tool. We want to use the brakes, we want to use this. And I don't know how many people really use the rear brake here. Okay, not exactly. We've kind of been taught not to use the rear brake to come up through. Right? And I will tell you, I don't use the rear brake much at all. But some places I do use it, for instance, is here. Because there's so much straight up and down braking, right? Uh, but the one thing you have to remember, though, is if you do use the rear brake, right, you got all the way on the front. So how much is that rear tire really doing? Right? <laughs> I do much at the full braking. So therefore, I really don't start using the rear brake until I start giving back some front brake pressure, right? Get a little, little, get a little weight off the forks, transfer a little weight to the rear tire, then I start dragging the rear brake. Never really just use it more than about five or six percent. But it does help to keep a little bit of the load on the front tire, because it likes to squat the bike, right? So as I lean in, right, I've got more traction on both tires rather than having a light rear tire having so much weight on the front, it kind of helps. That's kind of an advanced technique, but hey, right? That's where we're going, right? We're going to the advanced level sometime. So, uh, all right, we're up next, and uh, I think that was a, a, a good little talk. Basically, I want you guys to go work on a little bit more um, uh, straight line brake pressure, right? Initial brake pressure is a little bit more, okay? And then start feeding it off, right? you'll get a little bit more comfortable with going in the corner a little bit farther, okay? We want to match, master the brakes first. Good job, guys. I will uh, I'll probably uh, get my letters on and go film you guys.